So hey guys and gals, I wanna, if this is Billy Roy Bob, uh, he's a rooster here at Nine Mile Farm and he is a daddy of some beautiful new baby chicks. And I just kinda wanted to start off with him cause he happens to be here and I wanted to get this video, uh, both parents involved. I was told when I bought this bird from Atwoods, which is kinda like tractor supply on steroids, that he was a porcelain uh, and there was a female with him that was also supposed to be a porcelain. I believe she was, she was pure white when she grew up. Um, I've always said that this bird looked a lot like an old English game bantam to me. And it turns out when I look up images of what a porcelain rooster is supposed to look like, it doesn't look like him at all. And he, I think it's actually called something like a weird name, like a flash old English game bantam. And it's, it, there's a trait with these kind of mauve blue feathers in him that's called self blue. He's a good looking bird. Now, if you look at his comb, you see, it looks pretty good, but it doesn't have a scallop to it. It used to. Um, he got frostbite in the uh, sub-zero weather. Um, he'd be dead if it wasn't for me. I had to force him into the chicken house. He didn't want to go in. He wanted to stay out in the elements for some reason during that. But anyway, he's he's upset with me right now because you know he's got his girls here, but one of his girls is locked away from him. And he's really not happy about this. He's been wondering where she is for quite a while. There's Ebony over there. She's a, a black cochin. And uh, the other that's old red. She's a red cochin. And this girl here, I was told was a Brahma when I got her. Uh, I looked up Brahma hens. She's not a Brahma. She, best I can tell, she's a buff Orpington. So what we've got is a buff Orpington bantam. And we've got an old English game bantam. And they have made these babies. And I'm telling you, they, now you don't know what they'll look like when they grow up, but they are some of the prettiest. I'm gonna get one of them. Mom's gonna be mad at me here in a second. But, cause I really can't film them good for you in there. There's, Billy Roy wants to spur me now. Get out of there, buddy. You ain't going in there. <laughs> they are just some of the prettiest little birds. I have ever seen. I'm trying to let him move around without having him bail. They're just gorgeous little birds. And uh, it has me wondering. I'm going to give them back to you, Mommy. Yeah, you're all right. Look at him. He is so protective. He's one of my favorite roosters I've ever had. He's incredibly protective of the other birds. But I wouldn't generally call him aggressive. He doesn't seem to bother anybody or try to spur anybody unless something like that's going on. I was uh, feeding the ducks the other day, and I don't see... I've got a couple Saxonies. Now, they're not around right now, and I think they think they're geese. When uh, when I'm feeding them and all, they'll, they'll come at me with their neck stretched out like a daggone goose, and they'll come right up to me, and I'll reach down and pick them up. And uh, the other day, I did that with one of them, and he tried to spur me for picking up a duck. Now, the thing is, he weighs about a, a pound soaking wet, and he does have some little spurs on him, but with no ass behind him, he really can't hurt anything, which is also cool. Uh, in general, I've been loving these Bantam chickens. My theory when I went to Bantams was, one, that they would be broody. That has played out well. And two, that they just wouldn't screw stuff up the way regular chickens do with tearing things up, and that has largely proved true. They have a couple little places where they've dug out a hole for dust baths that they kind of go to the same place every time. And other than that, they haven't caused any problems at all, have you? Now, Billy Roy here likes to get up on stuff. And he was uh, going over the fence into the neighbor's yard where Doggis, Doggis Chicken as Edis lives. And I was afraid he was going to get chomped. Um, so I, I did clip one of his wings and that stopped the fence hopping. But the girls, I've never clipped their wings. And they stay out of my raised beds. Now my raised beds are, they're well over that, I don't wanna walk, but you know, they're they are 24 inches, 27 inches high. Um, so I'm not saying that they'll stay out of a typical raised bed, but they have never been in there once and caused any trouble. So I got broody birds. They're smaller eggs, but they're reliable layers. And I've got, you know, no damage to the property and they fit in nicely with the ducks. And uh, we'll see where this goes. I'm gonna have to really, I think I'm gonna keep these guys. This was a quail cage project we worked on a long time ago with a dude named Steve, and we called it the quail tracker, and it was designed to be quail tracker, 
T-R-A-C-K-R was how we were calling it, uh, to be designed to be a tractor for quails. Um, you know, little bantam birds aren't much bigger than a quail, so I'm going to keep them in here a little longer probably than I normally do because my last batch of bantams, and they had some genetics in them where... <laughs> I'll just say that it didn't really bother me that much that it happened, but I don't want it to happen to these guys. They drowned their daggone selves. All six of them committed suicide in the duck water pans. So we're gonna wait till these guys are closer to mom's size before we let them out and about to protect them from themselves. But uh, I gotta tell you, Ebony there, she's been laying eggs on the porch behind that garbage can. And I'm tempted to put some material there so it's a nice nesting spot because usually when they stop laying in the chicken house and they pick a spot and they start laying in that spot, what's gonna happen is that bird's gonna build up a certain number of eggs and then she's gonna sit so that they all hatch about the same time. And I think she wants to go broody right behind that trash can there. And I just might let her because the way all of these look almost exactly the same I'm pretty sure that old Butterscotch here, she she's the mom of all of them. That, that Ebony and Red there didn't get any eggs underneath her. She actually found a spot. We had a, a moving blanket covering a 55-gallon aquarium that leaks. It's not broken, but it leaks and it needs to be fixed. There was a moving blanket over it to protect it, and it made like a hammock. And she went up into that moving blanket, suspended off the ground, and she laid her eggs there. And she went birdie while we were on vacation. Anyway, I don't know what you'd call this breed, this cross, but it seems to have a lot of potential. I have two friends already that are interested in eggs from her when she starts laying again, or the birds themselves, to work with them and uh, and kind of improve the traits of this, this cross. And that's from one day of looking at a picture. I have two active people that want to want to work with it. So maybe we stumbled onto something. Again, I thought we had a... Uh, Brahma and porcelain, but what we got is an old English game bantam, apparently. Self blue, whatever the hell that means. And uh, plain old Buff Orpington. So, what happens if we cross him with a black cotion? We might find out. Tell me what you think. <laughs>